Cost Reduction Investment Keramic Tile Producer Introduction. Now we will discuss about how we can calculate whether it makes sense to install automated robots that will help us reduce the cost of labor. So imagine that you're working for Keramic Tiles Producer that has 10 factories in Eastern Europe. And each and every factory on average has 15 production lines. Every production line requires a certain team of people that will be moving the tiles from the production line at the very end and put it in cartons. Unfortunately, currently we are doing it manually and there are like two people per line. We have four brigades, so it's like plenty of people actually doing this stuff. Moreover, this is very demanding physical work. So a lot of people are suffering from some sort of a illness and they take a lot of days, so they're quite expensive also for the company. Therefore, to speed it up and to reduce some costs, we want to put robots on each and every line in each and every factory. And now your task is to calculate whether it makes sense or not. In the next lectures, we'll go through, as always, the current cost structure and the current cost level. Then we'll compare it with the future cost structure and cost level. Obviously, they will be different because we are changing the method with which we want to achieve the result. And as always, we'll look at the NPV and later on, we'll look at the solution, how to present it in PowerPoint. So enjoy the case study. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Let's calculate in Excel whether the automation we want to do in the ceramic tiles makes sense. So please open a file attached to the lecture, which is called Cost Reduction Investment Ceramic Tiles. And here you have a table of contents. So we start with the current level of costs. Then the future level of cost, if we automate the solution, later on we'll compare both and we'll calculate the net present value of the investment and also an internal rate of return. Finally, there are two interesting sheets. So the first one is the data prepared for the slides. So this is something I always do in order to be able to change the data fast. And finally, there is a list of useful links related to that case that you can have a look at. Now, we'll start with the current costs. So let's go to the first sheet. And here you will see that we have prepared a universal sheet we're going to use for both future and current costs, but they will have different values. So since we currently use a manual solution, there is no electricity, so it's like zero, no maintenance, so it's zero. So then we just have a cost of labor. And cost of labor consists of two drivers. So the first driver is number of factories, so it's 10. And then we also have calculated the um, cost per one factory, which is roughly almost 2 million and growing. When you look at the cost per one factory, it depends on number of lines, which is 15, and then the cost of labor per one line, which is 130,000. The cost of labor depends on three things. So we've got number of people in a brigade, so a group of people that works together. Since they work 24-7, it means that you need four brigades to cover it. And finally, we've got a cost per one person that we know that is growing fast by 7% annually. So out of this, we get the calculation of the cost of labor. And as you can see below, we have the total cost, which consists of the sum of those three, the electricity and maintenance in the case of the current solution does not exist because we don't have any automation and there is just the cost of labor. Obviously, in the future solution will be the opposite. So you will have a cost of electricity and a cost of maintenance, whereas the cost of labor will be close to zero. It's always good to create the, roughly the same structure for analyzing both solutions and only play with the parameters as we will do here. So let's move on to the next lecture where we will have a look at what will be the level of future costs. We have covered so far the current costs. Now it's time to look at the future level of costs. So we used exactly the same structure for future cost. Obviously, the difference is that labor, since we don't have any workers, is zero. But instead of that, we've got cost of electricity and cost of maintenance. Now, how we calculated each and one of them. When it comes to cost of electricity, we have number of factories, which is 10. And then we calculated the cost per one factory which will depend on the following factors. So we've got number of production lines, which are 15. And then we have a certain calculated cost per one line where we put one robot, which is 38,000. Now, how we calculated the cost of electricity per one robot, we used for that the nominal required electric power the robot has, then what percentage he uses of the whole power when he's on. So we assume 75%. Usually it's around 50%, but this robot will be working most of the time. Then we also have number of hours he will be working. So we assumed 12 hours and 350 days. 
And obviously we have a cost of electricity, which is being indexed. So it grows by 2% every year. So in this way, the cost of electricity per one robot in 2020 is 38,000 and it grows to almost 46,000 in 2030. Now, when we look at the cost of maintenance, it consists of two parts. So how much we spend for exchange of parts and also external services that we have to pay to the supplier of robots so he can maintain the robot in the nice state. Parts we calculate by using how much we spend for capex, so 30 million. And then we assume that each and every year we will be exchanging roughly 5% of the growth value of the investment. Then when we look at the external services, it's simply certain amount that we have defined in the contract. And on top of that, we have certain growth assumed, so it's 5% for each and every year. So in this way, again, the external services grow from 1 million to 1.6 million in 2030. So that is the main two positions, so cost of electricity and cost of maintenance. Cost of labor is obviously zero, as we don't have any people. And this way we have a summary below in row 34. And this is simply a sum of all costs. So we have cost of electricity, maintenance, and then labor, which is zero in this case. So the cost of all robots used for unloading the production line, it's 8.1 million in 2020. So if we exchange the people, we'll be paying 8 million. And then in 2030, this will be almost 10 million. So we've got the current cost level, the future cost level. It's time to compare them and see how good the investment is. And this is what we're going to do in the next lecture. It's time to have a look at the NPV. So let's go to the sheets. And you'll see here that we have compared all cost positions. And we looked at the current cost as well as the future and calculated the three differences between them. So in terms of the electricity, we are paying more. So the difference is with a minus. Then when it comes to maintenance, it's the same. Currently, we don't have the, any maintenance. So if we compare it the future with the current, we'll get uh, that we have to pay more. That's why we, we have it with the minus. However, we are saving quite a lot of money on people so we can get rid of all the people. That's why we don't have to pay roughly 20 million in 2020 and then almost 40 million in 2030. Now, how we calculated this difference, we simply took the data from current and future costs sheets and we put them here. So here we've got, for example, the things from the current cost level, whereas in row seven, it's for the future cost level, as you can see. So that's how we calculated this part. Obviously, we want to have also the total difference in costs. So here we simply repeat the data from row five for the electricity, then from row nine for maintenance, and then from row 13 for the labor. We sum them up and in this way we get net value between difference in cost is 11 million for 2020. So we are, will be paying 5.6 million more for electricity, 2.5 more for maintenance. However, we'll be spending almost 20 million less on people. That's why the difference is 11 million. And for 2030, this difference grows almost to 29 million. Now, in terms of capex, we calculated it by first looking at the number of the robots we have to buy. So for every factory, and we've got 10 of them, we purchase for every line 15 robots. And that's why we've got uh, 150 robots. And then every robot costs us 200,000. And that's why we have to spend a lot of money, so 30 million. However, given the saving, it makes sense. So we calculate the cash flow. We use the total benefit. In our case, this is the difference between costs as the benefit and it's 11 million and we compare it with the capex and for each and every year we've got the cash flow in row 30. So for the first year we will be spending more due to the huge capex and it will be almost 19 million but afterwards we are generating quite hefty savings starting from year 2021 we are generating additional almost 13 million of uh, savings. Now, the NPV, so we calculated two NPVs, so five-year perspective using 10% discount, it's 24 million, and then 10-year perspective, it's 75 million, and the internal rate of return, so it shows us what is the return on the investment, it's actually 76%. So despite CapEx being huge, the internal rate of return is huge as well due to the fact that we have a very high annual savings because we get rid of a lot of people. And again, we calculate the NPV decomposition. So we calculate the net present value for each and every cost position as well as the benefits in order to be able to show it nicely on the graph what's driving the savings. So we have the present value of the total benefits, so the difference in cost, and this is 102 million. 
However, this consists of the following things. So from the 10 year perspective, the present value of the difference in labor is 156 million. Then from this, we have to deduct net present value of the difference in maintenance. So it's 60 million and electricity is almost 38 million. And in this way, we get to 102 million from the 10 year perspective, which we have in column K. And from the net present value of the net benefit, so 102 million for the 10 years NPV, we have to obviously deduct the net present value of the capex, which is 27 million. And in this way, we get 75 millions of NPV, which is exactly what we had here in the calculation done on the total cash flow. That is in short. Have a look at this. And in the next lecture, we will show you how to present it to the customer, the results of this investigation, this analysis. We will use the NPV decomposition so it's clear what's the driving force behind the savings and how we can actually improve it more. Cost reduction investment, ceramic tile producer solution in PowerPoint. Just as a reminder, you're working for a ceramic tile producer that operates 10 factories in Eastern Europe and each and every factory has 15 production line. Your customer wants to automate the unloading of the finished products from production line to cartons, which is currently done manually. After we did the calculations in Excel, we can do the NPV decomposition. As you might remember, we said that if we move from current manual solution to usage of robot, we'll get rid of all the people we need to do currently the job. This would mean that we would be saving almost 156 million over the next 10 years, expressed obviously in the NPV. Now, from this, we have to deduce the electricity cost. The robots will not need an operator, still they will need electricity. So in terms of electricity, we would be spending almost 40 million in 10 years. On top of that, you have to deduce from the savings we have from people almost 17 million additional maintenance costs. Again, this is the NPV over 10 years. This means that the net savings would be a little bit more than 100 million. And from this, as always, we deduct the capex to get to the pure NPV of the whole investment, which would be a little bit more than 75 million, which is a good result given that we put 27 million. It means that uh, we triple the money in 10 years and we achieve huge savings. On top of that, we also are not exposed to any problems with the labor force we might have currently during the seasons. And also we would not be exposed to problems caused by demographics. The higher the average age is in the specific nation, the more complicated it is to get any people to work and more and more automation will have to happen. But also for other strategic reasons that I have mentioned, such as flexibility and the fact that you de-risk your business from seasonality and also the changes in demographics.